Hello and welcome to episode number five of Let's Talk Design. On today's episode, I talk about workflow, client warranties, how much JavaScript you should know, and light or heavy font weights. Charlie asks, can you share your favorite lesser known shortcut for speeding up a workflow? Hey Charlie, thanks for sending in the question. If you don't know Charlie, then check out her channel. She's a fellow YouTuber. I think that's what people on YouTube are called. I don't know. But I'll link her channel down below, so make sure you go check it out. So there's probably not anything kind of like that unknown in my workflow. I'd say probably the thing that I'm finding most useful now is Photoshop libraries. So being able to actually create a library for each project or for things that are particularly useful, whether that's avatars or graphics and things like that. Um, I also create full color palettes in there as well. The other thing I find it really useful for is icons. So things like social media icons, just put them all in there. You've got one place, they're all vectors, they can just be dragged into there. So yeah, that's probably the thing that I use that's probably like newest and maybe least well known. Shane asks, do you have a warranty for clients? If so, how does that work? So Shane, yeah, we do have a warranty for clients or at least for 80% of our clients. And the way this works is really when we've finished a project is that anything that arises because of a problem in the system that we've built within six months, that is fixed free of charge. Now, this is only for anything that has broken that's down to us, that's, that's arisen that we have maybe missed in testing. So if the client goes in and just deletes a load of templates, that doesn't fall under warranty. And it also doesn't apply to third party services. So if something like Typekit just went down, then we would have to charge for kind of fixing that and making it work without Typekit. And it only lasts for six months too. After that, anything that arises is charged for on an hourly basis. David asks, would you or Ryan Havoc ever consider a Let's Talk development series? Yes, we would. Stay tuned. So Dean asks, font weights. Lighter looks nicer, but hard to read. Heavier is easier to read, but looks less designery. Drives me mad, but I tend to opt for the easier to read because I want my client's sites to get results, but feel upset they don't look as nice. Hey Dean, I kind of get the problem here. Like a particularly light font can be a bit illegible, right? Especially if perhaps your clients are on like a Windows machine or an older browser. So what we've been doing to try and get around this is introduce them to a tool called Typecast. And what that allows you to do is actually test out type in the browser and you can test all the different weights and styles that you want to. So they can actually then see how that would look in the browser that they're on. And then you can try that across multiple devices, multiple browsers, and then you can decide what you're gonna use on the site going forward. The thing to remember is we do want our sites to be legible and accessible. So don't get too designery, as you put it, with your fonts. And I would say to experiment, but always bear in mind that legibility is really key, especially for content. Alex asks, how much JavaScript does a web designer need to know? Alex, this is hard for me because as a designer, I don't know any JavaScript. And that's a decision made by me because I've decided that I don't want to learn JavaScript. Now, that doesn't mean I never will, and it hasn't held me back right now, but it doesn't mean that at some point I might decide I want to learn more JavaScript. What I want you to know is that you can be an amazing designer and know zero JavaScript. The thing is, it really comes down to what you want to be doing. If you want to learn JavaScript and you want to be able to put that into your work, then learn JavaScript. If not, don't worry about it. It's cool. So guys, this channel has always been a bit of an experiment for me. And the most important thing for me is that I'm providing you with value. So I thought about how else I could do that and I came up with this. So this section is gonna be dedicated to just three things that I found recently that I thought were useful, funny, helpful, or one of the above. So the first one is Video Monkey. I found Video Monkey because it is actually created by one of our clients who are awesome. And what they do is they provide free video for you to use on your websites and it's pretty cool, so go check that out. Number two is Deconstruct. Deconstruct is happening on the 11th of September this year. I think it's like their 11th one maybe, they've been doing it a while. It's run by the guys at Clearleft and I've never actually been. And it's always been one of those events that I really, really want to go to and I'm gonna go to it this year. 
The lineup looks incredible. It's always a little bit diverse. It's a bit different from your typical conference. So definitely worth checking out. And I think if you sign up to their mailing list, you can get like 10% off as well. So awesome. The third thing I want to share with you is a little app called Stand App, which is an awesome name for what it is. And what it is, is a notification app for Mac that just tells you to stand up whenever you set it like every half an hour, every hour, whatever. And it's really good because actually you realize how much you sit down when you use it. So check that out. I'll link the URL down below as with everything that I've mentioned in this episode. So that's it for this episode. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for sending in your questions week after week. I appreciate it. So until next week, that's it.